percolate on a particular mix of odd and inspiring news headlines in Wendy's Coffee House. Newsmakers with a pin shot for the unknown, unexplained, and unusual share their experiences with UFOs, ghost encounters, near-death experiences, and more for your own unique blend of Wendy's Coffee House Curious. And now, here's Wendy. Glad to have you along. There's so much going on. This year is just really, really already going by fast. Now we're going to go into the truth or consequences of lying. They're going to detect whether you can lie. Converis, the eye detect, my guest next on KCMO Talk Radio. KCMO Talk Radio, Wendy's Coffee House. Thank you for tuning in. I think you're going to find this interesting. These are new products, new technology, and we are we are really going into, um, I guess, future, <laughs> futurescape when we're talking about this one. This is called, um, and just, we're just going to do an overview, something that is better than a lie detector. It's called eye detect. All right. And if, if you are not familiar with how a lie detector works, because not everybody is, and we haven't had to undergo all this, but th- what this does is give you an almost an immediate an account of what's going on with your eyes. And maybe you've seen it in the, there's, I think I remember Stargate. Is it Stargate or something like that where they have a little character and they put the eye on them and the, the, the little camera detects whether they're lying. It's some kind of totally fantasy, sci-fi fiction. Well, guess what? <laughs> Not anymore. And so to talk about this, I have uh, one of the authorities here because I wanted to figure out what direction it was going and where we, what we could count on, because this could be something that's a game changer just in the, in the realm of, of any kind of legal in, in terms of, you know, the, if you're putting the polygraph off the chart and putting this in there, then it also goes into human resources. It goes into all sorts of technologies that we will soon find antiquated as a result of this new product. Todd Mickelson is here, and he is with the company... Converus. Is it Converus or Converus? It's Converus. Okay. Yes. All right. Todd, first your background. What, what, what do you do and, and what is this product? Um, so I am uh, an entrepreneur. I've been involved in several startup companies, uh, mostly in the high-tech area over the last 30 years. And um, this is the, uh, the latest uh, company that I've been involved in. I'm the CEO and uh, we uh, saw a great opportunity to take some science that came out of the University of Utah by the same professors that uh, digitized or computerized the polygraph in 1992. Uh, They began research in this area of alternative ways to detect if someone is being deceptive or if someone is lying. Uh, They were seeking something that is... um, non-intrusive, something that's accurate, something that's immediate, something that's non-biased, in in essence an alternative uh, way to to detect if someone is is being deceptive. And um, what they found is the eyes are in fact the windows to the soul. Um, By analyzing changes that occur in your eyes as you answer uh, a series of questions presented to you on a computer. Uh, We can detect with a high degree of accuracy if you're being deceptive about uh, the answers to the items that are presented to you. So to compare it with a a person, a human, who is looking at just to try and detect whether somebody is lying has about, according to your statistics, 54% for detecting a liar. So that's like a coin flip, 50-50. That's correct. There are um, uh, a lot of of, uh, individuals who presume that they can tell if someone is lying based on their facial expressions, based on their mannerisms. You know, do they look up or right or look down to the lower left as they answer a question? Uh, The science um, um, and the studies that have been done on that type of approach indicates that uh, on average, uh, people are are only 50% uh, 
to 54% accurate in terms of determining if someone is, is lying in that situation. The exception would be um, uh, a parent or a spouse, perhaps, who really knows the individual and can detect those tales. Um, what we do is we analyze changes using an infrared camera in the eyes uh, that you can't see with, with the naked eye. And it's based on the premise that when we lie, it takes more mental effort, more cognitive load, if you will, mm -hmm. to tell a lie than to tell the truth. And that increase in mental effort, uh, even though it's, it, it, you know, it's slight, um, is exhibited through our eyes. Uh, it's exhibited by them dilating up to a tenth of a millimeter. So once again, something you can't see uh, with the naked eye, but with an infrared camera, an eye tracker, that's capturing these minute changes up to a hundredth of a millimeter at 60 times per second. Um, using uh, a computer algorithm, we can we can detect, we can first of all capture that those minute changes uh, during the course of presenting a series of simple questions to the individual on the computer screen, and then, uh, and then we can analyze um, uh, that data that's captured instantaneously with an algorithm that tells us with 80% uh, or 86% accuracy or more uh, whether or not the person is being deceptive about that topic. And how does that compare with the polygraph? So the polygraph uh, has a range um, primarily because with a polygraph you have uh, a human being that is presenting the items and analyzing the results. Um, in the case of a really broad set of questions, like what would be presented in a pre-employment screening test uh, on topics such as, you know, have you used illegal drugs, say, in the last five years, um, those are referred to as screening exams, and the published results from the American Polygraph Association indicates that the accuracy is between 72 and 82 percent uh, for a screening exam. For a specific incident exam or an investigation, something that uh, is more specific like uh, were you at the scene of the crime when it occurred, um, uh, that range is, is anywhere from 80 to 90 percent accurate. Mm. So we're 86 percent accurate across the board, um, and it's consistent. Uh, we don't have any uh, inconclusives, so that, that's uh, another difference in the case of the polygraph. They have uh, up to 15 percent of the tests that are given uh, that come back as inconclusive where there just isn't enough data to make a decision one way or the other. Um, in all of our tests that we have performed in the field and in the lab to um, verify what our accuracy is, uh, we make a determination one way or the other in, in all cases. Okay, so if somebody comes back and says, B but it, it didn't work, it malfunctioned. <laughs> well, um, so if anyone says, you know, these approaches are 100% accurate, they're, they're, not being, they're not being truthful. Um, uh, these, these tools measure physiological changes and, uh, against a baseline. And in some cases, um, for one reason or another that we can't explain, some people react physiologically different than others, mm -hmm. and that's why they're not they're not 100%. Um, they really should be utilized as a data point for making a decision, as opposed to a definitive, um, uh, you know, a definitive uh, decision upon mm -hmm. which you take action. And um, so, you know, we we don't get, we don't get it right every time, but but it certainly is uh, a data point, and uh, we believe it's more consistent. Uh, and it's more fair because it's, in essence, a sensor that captures the data and then a computerized algorithm that determines uh, whether the person is credible or, or deceptive. Okay, and the, the reason I find this so fascinating is because this is probably, you know, a template for future types of tech 
that will give us a lot more information about our world than we have had available prior to these types of programs. But this is a game changer. It's a real game changer. I've got to take a break. But uh, we're going to come back with Todd Mickelson, who's talking about Converis and the product that we're talking about is Eye Detect. But there's another one called Identity Detect. All right, and we're going to get into that, too, and find out. For one thing, you know, what situation you would be facing if you had to take one of these little tests and what, you know, what that might um, – what that might reveal all across, I guess, our government, our human resources, and just general basis of determining who you're going to hire for the next program, corporations. There are a lot of uses I can see with this. So hang on. And again, Todd Mickelson, my guest, talking about the new AI using some form of computer program to determine whether or not you're lying or you're telling the truth. All right? Back next with more of that on Wendy's Coffee House, KCMO Talk Radio. KCMO Talk Radio. Hi there, I'm Wendy. My guest. We're getting into the truth of the situation. Truth or consequences? Truth or lies? Deception? Are there ways to get around these kinds of things when people, you know, you know darn good and well they are not telling the truth and you don't want to call them on it, but it's really obvious. And is there another way that you can do that gently and still forcefully enough to say, see ya, you know, and I'm not going to say the word, but you know, the, the BS detector, how's that? Well, there's a pro- uh, uh, actual product out now. Converis is the originator of this product. It's called Eye Detect. That is better than a lie detector. A polygraph, okay? A better lie detector than a polygraph. Maybe I should say it that way. My guest is Todd Mickelson, and he's going to tell us about the product and more. There's another one called Identity Detect. These things are coming on the scene. They are being incorporated into current use, whether it's government or corporate or all across the globe. This is just the beginning, and that's my view of it anyway, because these things are so effective and they take the middleman, the human factor out of it by, you know, are you having a bad day at work? Did you read it wrong? Did you misplace the equipment? Did we have a lightning strike? That kind of stuff. Um, Todd, this is, I think, in in so many ways, a real game changer in terms of getting in, ter- in, in corporate use or in government use, intelligence use, a product that will give you a, a very extremely accurate result when you're trying to figure out if somebody's telling a lie or telling the truth. I'm 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 kind of frightened, <laughs> to be honest. Like, maybe I don't want to answer these questions. <laughs> intimidated? Well, How's that? <laughs> you, you shouldn't be intimidated. Hopefully, um, you know, our goal in in producing ID Tech was to help protect countries, corporations, and communities from corruption, fraud, and threats. And those are the those are the areas in which ID Tech is being used today. We okay. have over 400 customers across 40 countries running tens of thousands of these exams today. And I can just give you a few examples uh, uh, in each of those areas where ID Tech is being used. Mm-hmm. First of all, the protect countries or um, um, uh, organiz- you know, uh, us as, as people, uh, we have uh, some governments that are using ID Tech to verify if people have ties to terrorism. Uh, because it's a product that is consistent and computer-based, it can scale, it can, it can be used on hundreds or thousands of people. Um, very quickly, the test is less than 30 minutes, and basically the person sits down in front of the computer where there's an infrared eye tracker, and they are presented with the same questions that they potentially be presented in, uh, presented with in order to get a visa. Um, those questions would include things such as, do you have ties to terrorism? And um, with, with I detect uh, within minutes after the uh, test is completed, um, we, can, we can know whether or not the person potentially has ties to terrorism. It's an actual test that is being used today by... Uh, by some governments who are wary of, of, of people coming into their country that may have ties to terrorism. We have corporations uh, and law enforcement here in the U.S. that use it for screening potential hires. So it is more of a pre-employment uh, screening situation. What are they asking? They're asking whether or not 
in the case of law enforcement, the individual um, has um, uh, has issues with illegal drugs, um, whether they have specifically consumed illegal drugs in the last two years or last five years, depending on depending on what the role is. Um, they also will ask whether or not they have been involved in any serious crimes, crimes that would be characterized as a felony or a Class A misdemeanor. Um, and uh, finally, where they have worked, where they have gone to school, and uh, where they have lived. Things that go into doing a proper background check. Uh, if they haven't been truthful about some of those pieces of information, then the background check won't be as effective. And so um, those are the typical things that uh, they're screened for uh, in, in a single exam. So and if somebody finally, was to yeah. embellish on their, their little curriculum on their, on their resume and say, well, I, I got a Ph.D., well, maybe not that, that high, but I went to a certain school that's better than another school, and I finished the program, or I, whatever, you know, you, I, I also am fluent in certain other abilities, and then as they're talking and, and responding to those questions, you're going to know, uh-uh, that doesn't match without even looking at the piece of paper. That, that's correct. Um, now, obviously, uh, the tests need to be constructed in a way that there's a clear differentiation in what you're asking. Uh, we all know that, uh, that people lie or embellish their resume, for example. Mm -hmm. um, they, they may uh, uh, make it sound as though they were the key contributor on a given project that, 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 that generated significant revenue for the organization. Uh, when in, in reality they were a member of the team, but they weren't the leader, perhaps. Those kinds of things are harder to detect, um, and so we, we focus on more discrete things, such as, you know, um, did you lie on your on your application specifically about where you went to school? Oh, lovely. Or where, uh -huh. where, where, uh, what degree you received, uh -huh. uh, where you lived, or where you have worked. Uh, and those are more cut and dry uh, things that we can test on that 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 the system will will register properly, um, and we know with a high degree of accuracy if if the person is lying. Okay. Now the other thing that we didn't get into the intelligence that the it, that identity detect. Now is that different than eye detect? It is. Yeah. So eye detect uses an infrared camera, as I mentioned, to capture up to 60 measurements per second as someone is sitting in front of a computer answering these uh, questions that are presented to them. And they're simple questions to which they answer true or false. Um, Identity Detect is um, a product that we designed that could be run in an online environment or via a, a mobile app specifically to verify if the person is who they purport to be. Okay. Um, and um, as you can imagine, uh, that scenario is, is more specific. Um, it would apply in a situation where perhaps I'm, I'm getting set up uh, with a financial institution, uh, uh, with a bank account, or with a means of transferring you know, funds from one account to another. And it's really important that the organization confirm my identity. Uh, it may be a government uh, organization that's interested in whether or not the per person asking for a visa to travel to that country is, in fact, who they purport to be. And so um, the test needs to be, you know, no more than three minutes. In some cases, um, you know, as, as short as a minute. And it needs to be something that can be done over a, a standard web browser or uh, a a mobile app on a smartphone, okay. um, and so we don't have we don't have an infrared camera that can track changes in the eyes. Uh, rather, we um, we 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 capture subtle variations in their motor nervous system as they interact with either the app or the web browser to where they're entering the information. Okay. And much like our eyes change when when we lie, um, uh, there are uh, physiological changes in our motor nervous system that affects how we 
respond uh, to a form that we're filling out when we're lying about the information that we're putting in that form mm-hmm. uh, or, or how we navigate a, um, a, pa- a web page and, and click on various buttons to respond to a series of questions that are being presented to us. Okay, hang on, and it's hang those on. subtle variations that we capture. That you're, that you're picking up on. Okay, I'm gonna, we're going to take a quick break. I'm going to come back in a minute. But the, the press release I saw, Identity Verification Technology by Converis, only takes three minutes. Okay, so maybe you can address that when we come back out. Because that's, a, <laughs> that's a, amazing. Amazing. It's that yep. quick. So, okay, so hang on. Again, we're talking about Converis and truth or lies. Or maybe consequences next on Wendy's Coffee House. Oh, we get what we deserve. KCMO Talk Radio. Hi there, I'm Wendy, and my guest is with me talking about lies, deception, dishonesty, and truth. And they've got a product that will figure this out very quickly. With pretty much, I mean, this is really accurate 80%, or 86%, I'm sorry, for Converis, the eye detect. And that is just mind-boggling to see that this technology is, and I'm sure it's going to get even better as it, it continues. This has only been, this is pretty much relatively new, what, the last three three or so years. It was uh, released in 2015. Um, but we're talking about the kinds of things it can be used for. And when I was looking at one of the press releases that came out earlier, that identity verification, this is a little different than the eye detect, the identity ver- verification takes three minutes the, the how, um, I guess I should say, how does that change things now the, with the current, the current arsenal of identity, whatever we have at our disposal, identity verification systems? Is that like a leaps and bound forward? Well, I think, I think it is. Um, there is uh, a lot of challenges today with people's identity being Identities being stolen, uh, and um, uh, there, there there are new technologies that have come out um, that help with some of that. Uh, most of those technologies, however, don't address the core issue of is this person really who they purport to be. So um, you know, I can I can steal someone's pass- password. I can even uh, you know, create a fake federal ID that I present that has my picture on it, so it looks like me. Um, and those kinds of things can be um, can be beaten. Uh, what we've done with Identity Detect is provide a way in which, uh, in under three minutes, um, we can present either a series of questions to someone on on a web browser or through a mobile app. Uh, that they respond to that will help us to know uh, with 90% accuracy or more whether or not that person is really who they purport to be. And um, uh, imagine, if you will, coupling this capability with some of the other traditional methods. Um, Organizations are now moving more towards biometrics, uh, using facial recognition, Mm -hmm. um, using um, fingerprinting, uh, even an iris scan. Uh, Well, that uh, biometrics is only as good uh, as as your ability to know from the get-go whether or not that person is, is who they purport to be. Mm-hmm. Um, because if you take their fingerprints and they're representing someone else, uh, obviously those fingerprints are going to be validated each and every time that person presents him or herself. Uh, what you want to do is capture at the same time you capture the fingerprints whether or not they are who they purport to be and then couple those two concepts together so that you can then just use biometrics moving forward to verify that the person is who they purport to be. With this, um, unbiased, nobody's there, there's no middleman. Again, this is technology. This is all computerized. That's correct. Um, There is no test proctor uh, like you'd have with the ID tech test uh, to make sure the person is following instructions and sitting in front of the device. In this case, uh, literally it is... uh, embedded in the workflow of, of your process. So if you're applying for a visa to enter the country um, and the 
the government government agency that is um, verifying your details, uh, they can embed identity detect in the context of that visa application process and uh, present you with a series of questions to verify if you really are who you purport to be. Okay. Uh, the same would be true for uh, a banking transaction um, where, you know, today you may get a text message that comes back saying, did you just um, uh, perform a, uh, a given financial transaction? Mm -hmm. And before the financial institution uh, allows that to go through, they wait for a confirmation back from you via text. Well, uh, someone could have spoofed your phone, um, logged in as you, uh, and be responding as you. Mm -hmm. um, identity detect could be coupled with that capability where um, there's an additional step in the confirmation process. And we present uh, through that application a, a set of simple questions that you respond to uh, or a form that you fill out and um, we capture your motor nervous system uh, subtle differences as you're responding, uh, and we compare that against your, your baseline and can know in uh, less than three minutes, if it's a forms-based prompting, then it's less than a minute whether you are who you purport to be. Okay, now I am assuming that this technology is basically improving as you, as you begin to roll out these kinds of programs because I think Identity Detect was after the iDetect. And that, do you see these things changing significantly in the next five or ten years? Absolutely. I mean, on a monthly basis, we, we come out with uh, new capabilities uh, and improvements in the accuracy um, as we run more and more tests and capture um, uh, more data associated with wor real world situations. Uh, we can use machine learning to harness that data and improve the overall algorithms and the uh, the accuracy. Are you seeing people switch over now to eye detect versus a polygraph? Um, yes, uh, in in certain situations where organizations would really like to know if people are being deceptive, but yet a polygraph is too intrusive. You know, you get hooked up to, to various cables. Um, if the exam is done properly, it's uh, a minimum of 90 minutes. That just isn't feasible uh, in some situations, um, whereas I detect is, is a non-intrusive presentation of items um, uh, that people are used to responding to on a computer. They're filling out a job application, for example. Uh, we're presenting uh, a series of simple questions to you that, that are pertinent to the job. And um, you simply respond by interacting uh, with the software. Well, I felt less, and while that's happening, we capture it. I felt less so. intimidated when I was reading the list of things. And, and if you know, I would be filling out topics related to bribes, cyber crimes, drug trafficking, and um, money laundering unauthorized transactions, I felt, well, okay, I think I can answer those questions. <laughs> and, that's and, that's and, correct. Yeah, okay. It, it, it won't nail me on that. But th those are, I think, in terms of, those are game changers. What, what you're talking about with this technology and coming online, other things that will probably follow that very quickly, um, I think you're going to be very popular, okay? So <laughs> so people do want to connect. It's Converis, right? It is. Converis.com, and I, I, the, the line, truth validated, is a, is a nice mantra. And that's, that's really the goal. We believe that uh, with truth, um, you know, societies will be safer, organizations will be more successful. Um, we're helping create an environment of, of trust. Uh, and amongst our customers who have deployed iDetect in a, in a broad way, they've seen that to be the case. Uh, they get uh, a different class of, 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 of applicants, people who know um, that they're coming to work for an organization that, that rewards and cares about um, the integrity and trust of their employees. Um, and that has an effect uh, overall on their success um, because um, uh, studies that have been shown where there's fraud involved uh, indicate that in 70% of the cases, 
that fraud is associated with someone internally within John. the organization. So if you can cut that out, then um, that, that plays a major role. I appreciate you talking with me. Thank you. Thank you for your information. Converis Truth Validated, my guest, Todd Mickelson. Thank you. 